Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, go back and watch it. I just installed a secondary fuel filter from Ryko. This video, you're gonna see me installing Ryko crankcase filter, also known as a catch can. So we're gonna pull it apart, see what it's about, see what's inside, compare it to a few different other brands. Yeah, we're not gonna plumb it up tonight because I couldn't get any hose. So I'm chasing a 5.8 hose for oil. Couldn't get any today, so I'm gonna mount it all up, ready to go and we'll uh, plumb it in later. I don't have as much, obviously, emissions controls. I have no emission controls, but a lot of the newer cars do, so they have the EGR valves, uh, your PCV valves and things like that. So it's, it's beneficial to all vehicles, a lot more beneficial to newer modern diesels because of how much stuff gets recirculated back to the intake. So the idea of a catch can is to stop all that stuff getting back into your intake. So what happens is you have your combustion chamber causes blow by, gets past the piston rings and it's sort of a, a combustion gases that you don't really want chilling around in your engine. Um, it contaminates your water, jackets, your oil. They vent those. Um, it's illegal to vent them to atmosphere. It also becomes, you know, a lot of people put them in their chassis rails but then that's sort of a low point for water to go up <laughs> straight into your engine and yeah obviously being illegal. So a lot of cars vent them back into the intake. All that means it's a lot of oil particles being sent back into your intake. Those sort of sit on your intake, they can clog up if you have an EGR. Those hot exhaust gases then sort of harden those oil deposits and it becomes a carbon deposit and it can completely clog an intake. If you have a look at my intake, there's still massive amounts of oil coming out of my rocker cover and being sent straight back into my intake. So I'll show you what I mean. So I've just pulled off the hose that goes from my rocker cover and it goes straight back into my intake. And that is what comes through it. So it goes through this hose and it's just black sludge. Good times. What the catch can does is it sits in between here and it collects all of this. Alrighty, so this is the kit. Oh yes. Alright, so they give you a, we'll just go through what's in here. They give you a heap of different hose reducers. They give you two large hose clamps, so for the one inch um, and two smaller, which I believe is for the drain hose on the bottom. Give you mounting bolts. This is your drain hose, so clear drain hose, zippy ties, your bracket, and the drain bung. So this one I'm not going to end up installing at the moment because for where I'm mounting it, it's easier for me to quickly lift this off the bracket and empty the sump. But if you want to permanently run this hose, you can run it down to inside the chassis rail or anywhere like that and then this just pushes and turns to drain easy done and then twist up close it back up so that's another easy option run through some of the features outside so we've got check valve at the top it closes at I think negative 2 kPa you've got a bracket that swivels so you can sort of mount it in any direction. You've got four torx bits, which means this whole thing can be turned 90 degrees a few times. This has also got an O-ring on the inside, as well as it sort of like sits inside a lip. I was concerned about having so many, you know, joins, would it leak? But yeah, no, that was difficult to get off. That's definitely not gonna get any water past there. That's your inlet. There's a filter cartridge inside. This one here is your safety check valve. So if you forget to empty the sump, then this check valve will open and will vent. It just protects it so it doesn't become like a closed unit and build up pressure. So it protects your engine. That's what that check valve there is for. The storage area is actually one of the largest. It's 310 milliliters. So that's your drain valve down the bottom. If you want to have a good read of these, if you go on the RICO website and go to the page for these, it actually has a good comparison of comparing the flow rates, the efficiency to ProVent and HPD. And there's another one as well it compares it to. So, you know, I know there's a lot of big names out there, so it's good to see sort of a comparison. So we're gonna install this next to the fuel filter that I put in in the last video. 
and we're gonna plumb it in tomorrow when I get some hose. This is another sort of spot you can see the oil weeping just around the edge here off the intake and along the gasket line as well as on my intake so probably we'll be changing that gasket so you can sort of see how much oil is actually coming through and weeping out of the intake. Alright so the kit does come with bolts, um, those ones are just a little bit long because they were going to hit onto the battery but there is bolts supplied. This is how easy it slides on and off. Done! So that is pretty much how easy that was to install. Obviously this bracket was pre-made, that's going to be one of the longest things making a mounting point for it, but you saw how easy that just slid onto that bracket. So all that we do now is plumb in those two hoses to the top outlet, the bottom inlet, and what we're going to do is we're just going to run them along the firewall with those fuel lines all together and it'll just come back around to here. So these filters they recommend to drain at least every service or every 40,000. So I think I'm going to service mine every, you know, a bit more regularly at the start just to sort of see the rate at which the sump is filling um, and then gauge it from there but they definitely recommend at least every 40,000. Can't stress enough how much something like a catch can is important on a newer diesel. There's, I, I can't even count the amount of dual cab four drives that you pull the intake off and it's clogged that much that you can see like this little tiny amount. You're gonna lose performance, you're gonna, you know, increase fuel economy, like, um, sorry increased fuel usage. I don't know who has time to constantly pull off the intake and clean it. <laughs> I don't have time for that. Not so much an issue on cars that don't have heaps of emissions controls but every new car will so it's just something that I think if you have a new diesel engine in any car <laughs> this is something that you should be installing right at the start. So yeah, I'm really impressed with this filter. I did a lot of reading up on it. Seeing it compared to a lot of other big name brands was, um, yeah, really cool. So have a look at the description. The link is down below in the description box. Have a look, have a read. We're gonna see how it goes, but I'm happy with everything in the kit. It's pretty much everything you need. Um, obviously, I use a little bit different things because I have an old car. Nice, easy mod, really. Alrighty, so. That's pretty much done for now. I'll show you it done when it's got all the hoses in it and you can see where they go. If you haven't watched my fuel filter install video, go back and click that. If you like these sorts of videos, let me know. Otherwise, um, leave a comment with what you'd like to see in the future. I do a lot of mechanic in videos just because it's my job. <laughs> but I think half the fun of owning a four-wheel drive, especially an old one, is keeping it uh, on the road and reliable um, so these are some good mods that you can do. Old vehicles, new vehicles, doesn't matter. They're going to benefit in some way or another. So yeah, see you in my next video. Every single day, I'm gonna make